Hello everyone and welcome to Evolkai, a machine learning community for machine learning enthusiasts. Now today, we will be dealing with LGBM classifier, one of my favorites, light gradient boosting classifier. Okay. So LGBM, which stands for light gradient boosting classifier, is a powerful uh, machine learning algorithm known for its efficiency and accuracy. It is based on gradient boosting, which we discussed earlier but with some additional enhancements. To understand LGBM, let's imagine you have a group of friends and you want to collectively solve a difficult problem like a challenging puzzle. Each friend has their own skills and expertise. LGBM works in a similar way. Instead of using uh, just one friend at a time, it creates multiple smaller friends called decision trees and trains them on different subsets of data. Each decision tree focuses on specific aspects of the problem. However, LGBM has a clever trick to make decision trees more efficient. Instead of training the trees on the entire dataset, it uses a technique called gradient-based learning. It identifies the instances where the previous trees made mistakes and assign higher weights to these instances. This way, subsequent tree focuses more on the challenging or misclassified instances, aiming to correct the error made by the previous trees. Additionally, LGBM uses a technique called leaf-wise tree growth. Uh, rather than growing the tree level by level, it grows them in a way that prioritizes the leaf with higher information gain. This approach helps LGBM to find more informative splits earlier in the tree building processes, leading to faster convergence and improved accuracy. Furthermore, LGBM incorporates a process called feature bundling to group together less more important or less frequently occurring features. By doing so, it reduces the complexity of the model and improves efficiency without sacrificing much accuracy. Once all decision trees are built, LGBM combines their predictions in a smart way. Instead of simple average or majority voting, LGBM assigns higher weights to the more accurate trees, allowing them to have a greater impact on the final prediction. Okay, so now we have completed the explanation part. Now we will be moving to the practical part. Okay, so now first uh, we will start by importing the Pandai celebrity and uh, we will uh, read the data set using the read CSV function and we will get all the data information using the info, info function. Then uh, we will assign all the uh, columns that we have to take from the user and store it in features variable and the prediction class will be stored, uh, predicting uh, column will be stored in prediction class variable. So uh, and uh, their values will be stored in X and uh, for the features and uh, for prediction class the values will be stored in Y. X will have all the data that uh, our user will give us as the input and Y that it will get it will get as output from the machine learning model. Now uh, this is the training and testing part. Here we have uh, here we have to train here we have to split the uh, data into training and testing part. So uh, here we have assigned test size as uh, 0 0.30 which is an ideal as we have already discussed in uh, our earlier videos that the testing part should always be less and training part should always be more. So here the training and testing part is divided into the ratio of 7 is to 3 that is 70% is the training part and 30% is the training part. More uh, the uh, model will be trained uh, more accurately it will predict the results. Okay, so now here we will check uh, the uh, shapes of the data to uh, check if the train test, uh, test split has done its work correctly or not. Okay, so now we, ha we have reached an important part uh, in this uh, presentation. Now we will import LGBM classifier from LightGBM. Now this is an external library which you have to install uh, by yourself using the command line uh, using, the, uh, using pip install. So you can just write pip install light GBM and the uh, program will and the, this library will automatically be installed. Now, so using this uh, classifier, uh, we will assign this to a classifier CLF. Then we will fit the classifier uh, with the training data, and uh, the, uh, we will uh, use this classifier to predict uh, predict the uh, predict the output on X test and store the val uh, store the output in Y print variable. Now. Uh, we will import a uh, metrics from sklearn and uh, 
we will calculate the accuracy using y test and y print now for every y test and y print being same the accuracy will increase and for every uh, for every different value it will decrease so uh, this is also a great uh, great uh, classifier since it uh, it is a form of gradient boosting classifier only so we have achieved an accuracy of 97.77 now uh, let me just take you to the visual studios to get a practical implementation of what we have done till now Okay, so now we will start uh, by running all the code snippets. So I'll just quickly run all. Uh, now I'll explain you the code line by line. So first I have imported pandas library here because I'll be using read CSV uh, function. So from pandas library, I will uh, use read CSV function to uh, quickly uh, read the Alice data set. And from info, we I'll get all the information of the data set. That is their entries, the column names, if a column has null values or not, data type, float, object. Now, uh, using features and prediction class, I'll assign the input input column names to, in the feature and output column name in the prediction class variable. Now, for uh, their respective values will be stored in x and y. That is, features value will be uh, feature value will be stored in x and prediction classes value will be stored in y. Now, from sklearn.model selection, uh, I'll import a uh, train test split and then the, uh, and then split the data into training and testing part based on x and y variable. The testing size uh, is thirty percent, which is an ideal, which is the ideal selection. Now, uh, we will print the, uh, their shapes to check if the training and testing has been splitted properly or not. So here we can see that the training and testing has been split properly. The training data is one zero five and the testing data is forty five. Now, see, so LGBM is a special kind of uh, you can say gradient boosting classifier. So it has to be imported from a different file. So firstly, you have to pip install light GBM. So you can uh, use LGBM classifier after that. Now, uh, from LGBM classifier, I've imported LGBM classifier as LGBMC. Now, uh, I have just uh, given it a alias name. Now, uh, I, have, I have assigned it to classifier. Now, I'll fit this classifier or this model with the training data. That is X train and Y train. Now, after the model is trained, I will predict on this data on X test, uh, X test uh, values and will uh, store the values in Y print. Now, uh, from sklearn, uh, I will import metrics and uh, using the accuracy score, as always, I'll predict the accuracy using the y test and y print. Now, for every time the values of y test and y print are same, the accuracy will increase, otherwise it will decrease. So, uh, this was for the LGBM uh, code explanation. Now, I will be moving uh, towards the conclusion part. So, let's continue. Okay, so for conclusion, the light GBM or LGBM classifier is a gradient boosting algorithm that offers higher performance and scalability, making it well suited for large scale data set and real time applications. Its advantage lie in its efficiency as it uses a leaf wise tree growth strategy and histogram based feature discretion. This approach reduces memory usage and speed up training and prediction times. LGBM also support handling categorical features directly without requiring one hot encoding. It handles missing values and provides built-in mechanism for handling class imbalance through weighting or sampling. However, light JPM may require more careful tuning of hyperparameter to prevent overfitting and it may be sensitive to noisy data. This inter uh, the interpretability of light JPM model can be challenging due to the complexity of the ensemble of decision tree. So uh, this was this was pretty much it and uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you and happy learning.